There we go. I know, right? I feel like it, it should make some kind of fun sound. Hello, everyone. Welcome to a new current conversation. We are talking all about summer camp uh, tonight. We are excited to have um, Amber Stickle from the Phillipstown Rec Center, uh, director there, and Mark Price, director at the Beacon Recreation Department, joining us tonight to talk about what summer camp is going to be this year, all the unknowns that you know we're still waiting to figure out some of the things that might change um, before camp even starts. Um, and as always, we have, um, you know, we'll start with our own questions from Mike Turton, our reporter, who's here as well. And then we'll have time for questions from the public. I know a lot of parents, myself included, have a lot of questions. You can send them using the ask a question button that um, should be along the bottom the bottom of your screen somewhere in there. Um, and you can also share your ideas over on the chat, which is should be on the right side of your screen. So without further ado, we just have uh, half a minute to go. So I'll just, uh, yeah, I'll let you guys get right to it. Over to you, Mike. Okay, thank you, Teresa. I'm gonna start with some kind of broad questions first. But, um, and my first one is for the two of you, how does it feel to be almost back in the summer camp? Business? Are you excited, scared, nervous, uh, relieved? Well, it's a little different this year. So how are you feeling about it? Uh, I know that we're super excited to welcome kids back to campus. Uh, you know, we've been operating um, a much reduced uh, scale for the last couple of months. So we're just excited to have things kind of the hustle and bustle again. Um, I think it, no matter what kind of experience we can offer, we're just happy to offer some type of experience. And I think any time that we can get the kids out and going and moving during the summer um, is a great opportunity for everyone. So I, I know for my staff, we're really excited. Cool. How about you, Mark? Uh, same here. Um, we're, uh, you know, last last summer was a little heartbreaking. Um, rec departments, uh, you know, jump jump to action about this time of year, and, and this time of year last last year we were basically saying no to pretty much every phone call or email. Um, so for this year, yeah, we're we're happy to to you know be be in a position to to open our camp registration next week and, and think about opening our pool and and running everything else up right now while we're. We're on this. Uh, our Beacon Hoops program is, is is having a meeting. So yeah, there's there's some excitement. And, you know, a lot to figure out, but a lot of excitement too. That's, that's that's good. So we have a mix of uh, the audience is a, a mix of viewers tonight. Some from Phillips Sound, some from Beacon. So I think it'd be helpful for both those groups if you both of you could just indicate where your camps are held. Like folks in Beacon probably don't know where the Phillips Town. Uh, programs are held and vice versa. So Amber, where do you hold your, your uh, summer camp? So we offer three different types of summer camps uh, in Phillips Town. Our primary camp is our day camp program, which covers um, ages three through teens. Uh, that's held at the community center in Garrison, uh, which is down um, in uh, past the Highlands Country Club off of 90. Uh, we also hold specialty camps, so we do have a theater, a theater camp program, which is a four-week program, and we have um, our Junior Fire Academy program, which is a one-week program, and then we have a variety of sports camps, which are held actually all over Phillipstown. We're in process of securing some uh, locations. Looks like we're going to be able to get back into the Haldane Gym for our basketball programs. Our baseball programs will be up at North Highlands. Um, so we, are, we try to offer a location across uh, Phillipstown for everyone. Great. How about you, Mark? Um, our, our day camp program, we hold at our, our settlement camp park, which is located on 90 um, on the south side of town. Um, we have a tennis clinic and a multi-sport camp that, that meet over um, at the Memorial Park. That's right near the Clearwater uh, yeah. site, right? Yeah. Okay. So the other real broad question is, uh, are kids going to have as much fun this year as they did uh, pre-COVID? I mean, we, we, that's the goal. Obviously, uh, we're kind of kicking it back a little old school. Uh, we're going to go things a little bit more kind of similar to the camp experience that we all would have had growing up, primarily outdoors and going a little bit more um, uh, creative and a little bit more we're, we're creating more fun rather than uh, planned. So it's going to be a, a more organic process. Um, but yes, we do plan the kid, on the kids having just as much fun as they have in the past. Kind of a softball question, Mark, but I, I assume you're gonna... <laughs> no, they'll be miserable. <laughs> there'll, there'll be there'll be no no fun this summer. Um, no fun. No, uh, 
I, I think the structure of our camp, it's, it's, uh, it's, you know, we don't have to alter that much, maybe some numbers. Um, and we actually, um, uh, are doing a, a two week session versus a one week session to keep the kids together in hopes that I'll, that'll help with some of the COVID related stuff. But yeah, we, uh, it, it, it should look like camp. Um, it's funny, we, we make, make mention of, you know, the magic of camp and, and last year, our, our thoughts, you know, about trying to hold something last summer because it was feasible, but, you know, we couldn't figure out how to conjure the magic at camp. So, um, you know, this year, I think we're we're a little bit farther down the road and it feels like we, we can do that, um, you know, on a weekly basis. So we should have a blast. Good. So getting down into, you know, more of the details, I, I've been surprised that uh, New York State has not issued guidelines for summer camps, but uh, the CDC did uh, recently offer, or I should say, uh, issue guidelines. So whose guidelines do you follow or will you follow for your summer camps? Uh, we're required, to... yeah. So it's typically the CDC's recommendations, um, and then the state will form their guidelines off of that. We have to follow New York State recommendations. That's who our licensing is comes from, um, and then that gets altered and by the local county um, health departments. So we we are still waiting for um, official guidelines and recommendations from both the county and the state level. Same here, Mike. Um, Department of Health is our. our permitting body so we're we're we just met with them uh monday um they had literally just got those cdc guidelines and we're going to start reviewing them and, and seeing how they um you know um, apply to our our uh, camp permit yeah i can't imagine that there's a lot of seriously new uh points in in whatever the guidelines turn out to be i mean we've been advised now for more than a year how to deal with uh, covid and how to stay safe so what do you see as the, uh, you know, most parents obviously will be concerned about um, safety. So what do you see as the obvious protocols that you'll be following with kids um, and staff this summer to keep uh, everybody safe and happy? Um, I mean, I think it's going to look very similar to um, almost what they do in the school systems. Uh, we will be asking our parents and, and kids to go through a health screening prior to coming to camp each day. Um, it's going to be a simple, you know, yes or no question. Um, that they will have to do prior to coming to campus. Uh, we will be temperature screening uh, when they get when they get to campus. Our goal, uh, typically in the past, we've had our kids divided out into multi grades. Like we would combine first and second grade, third and fourth grade, fifth and sixth grade. Um, this year they will be single grades. Um, so our first grade will act independently from our second grade and so forth. Uh, the only combined grades will be our fifth and sixth, um, and that allows us to um, maintain group sizes and for contact tracing. And, you know, the goal is to kind of create a pod and that's the pod that will work together for the week. Uh, we did go ahead and offer um, a discount if you were to sign up for multi-weeks this year um, to get the kids to try and buy in for more weeks in the summer um, to try and offer as much consistency as we possibly can. Okay. Um, there's gonna be, you know, little tolerance from a health perspective, you know, if there's any, you know, signs we will ask for the child to be assessed by their doctor um, in order to come back to camp. Um, so I think it's kind of what we're seeing in the schools. Unfortunately, at this point, we are planning on the staff and uh, kids being masked this summer. Um, you know, we'll see what the guidelines come out with, from the state regarding that. Um, and at this point, our numbers are reduced. Uh, we are we did take registration at 50% capacity right now. And uh, like I said, we are hoping that once uh, we get more guidance from the state and the county, we can expand that. But um, so I don't think it's any surprises for anyone. I do think that it's a lot of what what the kids are seeing in school and what people are seeing within the community already. Um, so because of that, I think it'll be a good transition. Yeah, so Mark, I, what about distancing? I mean, I, when I picture kids at summer camp, I kind of picture them in big clusters, uh, you know, little blobs of kids running around very close to each other. Like, is distancing going to be a is that going to be a challenge to enforce, or is that going to be is that going to be part of the mix? Yeah, I mean, I, I think our best um, our best efforts are, are trying to figure out where where bottlenecks occur. So, I mean, the day will look, you know, typically at our camp, you know, there's a big morning meeting where everyone sort of congregates in the same area. So, stuff like that will probably have to change. We're um, like Amber said, we're trying to kind of create a pod set up so our groups will be, you know, um, together throughout the day. But you know, it's you know, putting some distance between activities and transitions. Um, 
you know, changing the way we do drop off and pick up. So there is, a, you know, sort of the bottlenecking is probably our best effort initially, you know, um, uh, to, to kind of limit, limit some of the contact. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think luckily for us and, and in general, kids, kids are in school and, you know, sort of have to, you know, figure out some stuff, you know, based on a, you know, a school day. So I, I believe a lot of that will apply. And I, I think of, of all the um, folks, you know, kids, kids adapted to masks and, and, you know, hand washing and everything that comes with, with this for the last year, much better than, than adults for sure. Yeah, it won't be new to the kids and they're, they're kind of used to the system yeah. now after more than a year. So it's not like it's gonna be a surprise to them either. Yeah. Uh, will, will the size of group activities be uh, reduced? Like individual activities? You know, if you would have had 15 kids in an activity last year, will it be like seven or eight this year? Or how will you handle, handle numbers within like specific activities? Uh, so at this point, we are just accepting 50%, we're operating at 50% capacity. Um, so naturally that's cutting everything in half. Um, the other big change for us, again, is that um, we've divided out our groups even further. So instead of a group of 30 in the past, it's now a group of 15 in a sense where each grade is now acting independently. Um, so uh, naturally everything is gonna be smaller in size. Same with you, Mark. Yeah, similarly. I mean, we'll, we'll lean on you know six feet or a mask, and and, and same. We've dropped our weekly totals um, down, so uh, uh, that that should help. You know, fewer kids on on campus. You know, for for the day. Uh, I mean, again, we're you know it's we're figuring some of this stuff up as we're actually speaking. So um, you know, until we get right into yeah. it, I don't I don't know if we know precisely how to work. You know. We got a pretty good idea, but um, you know. so in terms of your staff, um, I guess I was assuming they'd all be uh, at least 16 years old. I don't know if that's the case, but will you be requiring staff for the summer to be vaccinated by the time camp starts? Uh, we Mark, are not. It is. Yeah, oh, go ahead, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, we're we've encouraged all our most of our staff is returning from for previous years. Everyone's over 18. Um, a lot of them are in education, so um, and others we've encouraged. I, I believe all, almost all our staff is are already currently vaccinated, so um, it wasn't a mandate, but it, it definitely helped that everyone everyone is vaccinated. Um, more so for us, from you know our you know transition week to week is uh, that makes me feel a little bit better than um, than them not being vaccinated. If, if something happens to staff in week one, we're we're out for week two. It sort of the the house of cards falls at that point. So. Um, we're, we're optimistic that that'll, that'll help us, you know, continue the, the following week. Anyone that comes to the first session, um, we we switch kids every two weeks. So, uh, you know, if the first session um, something happens, we we you know, have a shot to run the second session and our third session. Amber, how about you? With your staff be vaccinated? Uh, we are not uh, requiring our staff to be vaccinated. Uh, we do hire starting at 15 for our CITs. So we do have a little bit of a younger population. Um, we did strongly encourage, uh, especially holding the vaccine clinics at rec, we were able to kind of get them connected to shots as quickly as possible. Um, and Mark, if you guys need any help with that, definitely reach out. Um, I'm happy to help. So, um, but it is at this point, it is not something that we're mandating. Um, but I think we are strongly encouraging and we're, you know, we're, we're helping them understand too, that, you know, if you're vaccinated, it will change your quarantine if you are exposed and that will allow you to keep working. So we're trying to also make it appealing to them in the sense where, you know, if you get exposed, you can still come to work. So uh, we're hoping that that helps motivate our staff to take care of it. So I'm wondering if, um, have you had to set aside activities that you, you know, looked forward to and kids look forward to in the past? Have you had to set aside certain activities that you're not doing because of the, the virus? Uh, well, we've opted not to travel this summer at all. Uh, we're not leaving campus. So um, the logistics of the busing and anything along those lines is just um, not something that we're comfortable taking on and we're, um, we're being discouraged from, from traveling this, this summer. So uh, that's, a, that's a bummer for us because we did like taking the kids um, on their trips. Um, and we are also, the Phillips Town does not have their own pool. We were contracting with the Highlands Country Club and we are not utilizing the pool this summer. 
So again, that's a little bit of a, a bummer for us, but we have some really fun activities in the works to kind of help um, make up for those losses. So I, I'm hoping that we don't feel it from a, from a camp operations perspective. Yeah, we'll get to that, but how about you, Mark? Um, yeah, I mean, in in pre previous years, we would have five one week sessions at camp, each with its own theme. Um, so we've, we've sort of stepped back from that and come up with a sort of a three two week session set up that, that is sort of the greatest hits of all those weeks. And that was specifically because we were started kind of weeding the guarding, you know, some stuff we, we knew were going to be, was going to be difficult to, to, to pull off. Um, and in addition, our, we've yet to wrap our head around, um, we have a pool right on site. So, uh, we're, you know, you know, in parallel to this, trying to figure out how we're going to open the pool to the public and, and utilize it for camp. So there's a uh, definitely a bigger, bigger thought process there. Um, on the other, not sure what that noise is. Uh, on the other side of the coin, uh, this has forced you to be a bit creative. I think. Well, it sounds like there's a herd of cattle coming through. Not me. <laughs> I don't hear anything. So, I'm sorry. The, the, the other side of the coin is, you know, has this? I guess COVID has forced you to be a bit creative. Are you putting new wrinkles into programs that uh, that uh, you wouldn't, you didn't before? Like, are you you're rethinking things? You've had to rethink things, really. But in terms of the actual activities, the kids will be taking part in. Have you gotten creative on that? You think? Uh, well, where we've, you know, in, in the past, we've been very, we've been able to utilize the building uh, heavily uh, for our summer camp operations. But this year, we're pretty much going to be mainly outdoors. Um, we're putting up a bunch of tents throughout the property. Um, so I think we're really just trying to go back to that old school feel of being outdoors, being able to explore the outdoors. You know, we're very fortunate to be on the property that we're on where we can take the kids on hikes and we can take the kids exploring and we have the pond, we can do some fishing and we can do a whole bunch of different type of activities that, and expose the kids to some stuff that they might not normally get exposed to. Um, and they live in the Hudson Valley and take advantage of the, you know, their backyard that they have at their fingertips. Um, so that's kind of what we're really trying to embrace is embracing the simplicity of camp more than the, the, the constant schedule of camp, um, which I'm super excited about. You know, we are hoping to uh, put in a basketball court, maybe a four square, um, and utilize some other different aspects of the property that we haven't utilized in the past. Um, so I think the creativity aspect of it is allowing us to take this to another level that we haven't been able to get to. Um, and so I'm super excited about, about some of the fun things that we have planned. Good. You're finding a new twist for some pro programs uh, mark or yeah i mean amber i think nailed it with um the simplicity of campus i think sometimes we get you know we get you know we we want kids to have a, a blast and, and sometimes the the simpler days are the ones that uh the kids sort of love the most so i mean we're we're going to stretch out on on our property um you know there's maybe some areas we may not explore i think we're you know again going to keep keep it as simple as possible i think the kids are going to be very excited to, to you know actually just be at camp um so i think it's going to allow us to uh, you know just sort of simplify things on a, a daily basis and, and still have a great time you mentioned that you may be opening the pool for the camp yeah we're i mean we're moving forward with opening the pool for the public in camp this this season um again we're waiting on department of health guidance um it's probably going to look quite a bit different than than years past, um, but but it will hopefully be open. You know, I think we can get there as long as we can find lifeguards. Yeah, would the pool present uh, extra hurdles that you have to get over in terms of uh, keeping kids safe or would it be easier? I, I mean, safe, yeah, safe. We, we can always keep them safe. I just, you know, at a, at, at a public pool, at some point, your best laid plans are, you know, around the window because everyone jumps into the same, you know, same same place you know um and it's hard to you know six feet of mask in a pool is a you know is a almost impossible task so um you know that's we're we're trying to figure out um you know that that specifically you know probably will mean smaller groups at the pool instead of a you know larger camp a lot of times uh we would have large camp you know groups waiting for everyone everyone in the pool you know um so yeah. we'll, it'll look a little different 
Um, I wonder if there's been, has there been any silver lining in this crazy situation at all for you as camp director? Uh, other than maybe getting back to basics in terms of how the camp, you know, old school camps, as Amber said, but has there been a silver lining at all? It, it certainly caused you to think, not that you weren't thinking before, but. I mean, I think that we're just so thankful to even just have the opportunity to, to provide camp this summer that for me, the silver lining is just to be back and just to kind of have and to, to give the service back to the community. Um, I'm, I was extremely impressed with the retention rate we had for our staff. I thought maybe some of our staff would be afraid to come back to camp, but um, we're bringing back most of our staff to the point where we had to get creative in how we could hire new staff to, prevent, to, to bring in some new um, to allow us to create some some more seniority and so i mean for me i just think that the buy-in from the community has been great we opened registration and we were sold out within five minutes um and so i think people are just excited and we're just excited to kind of have the summer back yeah but you know i did uh, sort of a random sampling of camps a few weeks ago and it seemed like overall there's a lot of pent-up uh, energy and demand uh, for camps again after, after all the things that kids had to go through uh, in school for the past year. I think the demand is certainly there. Have you noticed, do you have a clear indication, Mark, in terms of demand or are you? Uh, yeah, I mean, we're probably in line uh, with previous seasons. Uh, we, we keep track of, um, you know, uh, we have an online registration platform and, and one of our indicators is folks that have uploaded everything they need to upload prior to registration. So. Um, you know that that isn't necessarily the best uh amber will know that it's necessarily the best indicator but you know i have a you know about the same amount of people have done due diligence to get their forms uploaded and, and prepped for you know the opening of registration so um you know i also think you know i'm not i'm not too sure i mean i i, I believe some people will be hesitant uh, you know i i think communities are divided on on finding stuff to do and still you know being safe you know we're still in a and, you know, window where, you know, I think uh, families or folks are still home or working from home. So um, I don't really know until registration opens up. And it's it's hard to say, too, because we've had to drop our numbers. So we might not necessarily have the demand um, and or, you know, we, we could definitely have, you know, fewer spots than we would in years prior. So I guess I'll see you on Tuesday. But if Amber's yeah. uh, five minute sellout is any indication, we'll probably be, uh, you know, full in a minute or two, too. I will say that we do still have availability in our sports programs and our theater programs. And I am definitely strongly encouraging people to get on wait lists because like I said, we haven't received our guidelines yet. And I, I do expect that 50% capacity to expand. Um, I don't believe that we'll be operating at 50%. I believe it will be more. So I 100% encourage people and I'm sure Mark will do the same to get on wait lists, to register for some new stuff, try basketball camp, try soccer camp, lacrosse camp, try a theater camp, you know, don't look at the day camp program and say, oh, it's sold out, it's done, my kids have no hope. No, there's plenty of other options, um, even with our neighbors and, you know, it's definitely like, a, we're a network, so we definitely uh, refer each other back and forth and, and so, don't be afraid to reach out, ask questions, get on wait lists, try something new. Um, this is, the summer's a great time to do that, so. Uh, someone on the screen is saying that if either of you are able, that the uh, the Boscobel House and Gardens is available for field trips. But Amber, you've said you won't be doing field trips. I may have missed it, Mark, but did you comment on on uh, travel or trips at all? Do you take the kids away from the campus at all, or are they right on the campus? We the the our campsite is you know uh, we 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 don't travel. We have a pool and uh, plenty to do there. <coughs> So looking ahead, I'm wondering if the, the two of you have ever given thought to sleepover camps, or is that just <laughs> too much of a horse of a different color totally? I see the two of you swarming a lot, um, or even like a short term, like one night sleep in a tent kind of program, or is that like just uh, too much of a switch, too much of a paradigm shift? You know what? It's a completely different set of regulations. Um, we yeah. get licensed for a day camp. It would be like a completely different beast. Um, and it's, on, you know, Phillipstown is fortunate to have, a, we're in a location where there's plenty of sleepaway camp opportunities. Um, and I do think that 
it's not um, necessarily something that we would, we would get involved in at this point. Yeah, yeah it's, if, if you were to see the regs and, and sort of, um, and, and, you know, backlog, you, you really, you might as well do nine weeks and 500 kids, you know, by the time you're, um, you know, figured out everything they require of them to sleep over camp. Well, that's what uh, Surprise Lake Camp does that. They have uh, four to 500 kids for the summer. <coughs> I imagine the logistics of operating that. But, but, uh, um, how do you handle, how do you handle food during the, the, uh, the day program camp? Like, is this a brown bag lunch for kids every day or wow, how is food handled? We require all of our campers to bring their own snacks and lunch. You too, Mark? Yep, yep. Uh, we have some some emergency snacks on hand, but everything else, uh, you got to bring snacks and lunch. Yeah. I guess the one question I always ask is, what have I not asked you guys that, that I should be asking you? What, I have, what have I not covered? How are you in terms of... Um, Hiring staff, has there been equally demand, equal demand for staff to return? Or are staff people kind of leery, leery yet, or are they chomping at the bit to get back to work at the camp as well? Mark? We, first? yeah, go ahead, Mark. Oh, we, I, we have a small staff, and, and everyone was, was happy to come back. Um, so, you know, it wasn't, you know, we made the call to our, our camp director and, and she reached out to her team and, and everyone said yes. So we usually like to add a couple new staffers every year um, just to keep the cycle going. But um, you know, this year we're, we're all returning. That's good. That's good yeah, we have, we're having the exact same experience. Yeah, good. Well, I think we've reached just about reached a half an hour, which was our goal. So unless um, unless you have any final editorial comments. Um, I think we can call it a night. Oh, there might be a question here. Uh, there's a question here is, is the Gaga, the Gaga ball yes. going to happen? Somebody's son wants to know. We will. What is, what is be, that? So Gaga is a, it's a great game. Basically it's an octagon shaped court with walls and the kids are in there and they hit the ball around with their hand and they try to hit each other with the ball below the knees and that's how you it's a it's, and that's how you, you get people out um we do love gaga um it's definitely not something that can be social distance in its current setup so we are looking at how we could modify it slightly to try and uh create a little bit more of a covid safe version of the game but there will be some form of gaga it might not be what they're used to but um there'll be some form of it returning this summer Sounds like a, a, a kinder version of murder ball. <laughs> um, I, when I saw that, it was funny. When, when I saw Gaga ball, I thought it was some kind of a dance that the kids were going to have to dance, but uh, I guess not. And there's nothing to do with Lady Gaga either, apparently. No. <laughs> I think that is it for our questions. Um, yeah. I think everything. Uh, I'm very happy to hear that Gaga Ball is making a COVID safe comeback because that was uh, of both my kids uh, a couple of years ago. It definitely won't be the same, but there'll be a version of it back. So That's, that's better on no Gaga Ball. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. We're going to be uh, posting the recording of this online. So anybody who couldn't attend tonight can watch it tomorrow or over the weekend. Um, thank you both for taking the time and for sharing your perspectives and, and all the show. And yeah, can't, can't wait for camp to start. Thank Appreciate you guys. It. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you. Thanks, Have a good night.